Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. On Finding Peace, I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical, everyday life tips that we can use to help us find our inner peace. And I'm very pleased to be joined today uh, with our guest, Tiffany Toombs. And she's going to share a bit about her experiences and what she does, as well as uh, to talk about uh, her latest book, which is uh, coming out soon. So love to hear more about that. So uh, welcome, Tiffany. It's great to have you. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Great. So if if, uh, you can kind of introduce yourself and tell us a a bit about... Mm -hmm who you are, what you do, how you got there, and uh, we'll go from there. I can can do that. So um, I 100% now work as a life coach. Um, I specialize in helping people rewire their unconscious mind to overcome self-sabotage, limiting beliefs, negative emotions, anything that's holding them back from reaching their true potential in life. Um, I've always been a coach in some form or another since I was about 15. When I was 15, I started working with sports teams as a fitness coach and rehabbing injuries. And that's taken me all over the world. And when I was living down in Australia, I had a had my own personal breakdown, which I now look at as very much being a breakthrough. And uh that allowed me just to see how powerful the unconscious mind is in terms of creating our future. So I took that information, I used it to study neuro-linguistic programming, and I'm a master practitioner and trainer in that, as well as in matrix therapies and some other meditations and mindfulness techniques. That, that all sounds awesome. And I haven't been trained in the NLP, but I know people who have used it and the research I've done on it, and it's tremendous, uh, you know, work and really changes lives. It does. It's, I mean, I obviously believe in the power of what I do, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. And I'm just, I'm continually amazed by the results that my clients get in terms of just how powerful it is. I work with... Um, people from that have more everyday style issues like procrastination, fear of failure, um, not finding the right relationship, feeling stuck in their health, all the way up to people who have had more traumatic events around uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, even sexual abuse and rape. I've worked with victims uh, and survivors in those areas and and the results that they get being able to come off antidepressant medications and anti-anxiety medications, not having panic attacks anymore. It's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and, and all of those, you know, really lead us in, into finding peace. And if there's a way to do that, uh, you know, in the, in the healthiest way possible, I'm all for it. Um, yeah, I am too. Coming from a, from a health background, I, I avoid as much unnatural substances as I can in the body. So, Perfect. Uh, I, I, w- I wish more people would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a bit of a revolution in that area on the horizon. So, oh, I, I would agree. I mean, you know, even just for me going into the grocery stores, I, I notice more and more uh, products are, are now available that, you know, are giving, 
you know, more natural options than what we've seen ever before. And uh, I, I'm in quite the rural area. So, you know, if, if I'm starting to see it, I'm sure in many uh, metropolises, <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it's easier to get. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when you look at uh, your website and what you do, uh, you talk about why you uh, call what you do the Blue Lotus. Can you share a bit about that? So I'll be honest, blue is my favorite color. Uh, my eyes are like bright blue, so that I think that's probably the reason why. And I wanted to be able to incorporate the word blue into what I did in some way, just for selfish reasons, I guess. And when I started doing research around Buddhist cultures and Eastern cultures, I found that the lotus and the blue lotus in particular has a lot of symbolic meanings that related very much to what I do. So the blue, the, the lotus flower itself has to grow through mud. So it grows through that kind of gross point, uh, you know, where it's icky and, you know, all the things people tend to mm -hmm. avoid in their life to become pure. And so for me, that was the perfect metaphor for, um, for people going through the trials and tribulations, people going through the rough times and the rock bottoms and the breakdowns in order to come out the other side better. And I, I am a big believer and I, I teach and coach all of my clients and students around embracing the struggle and embracing that part of your journey because ultimately that mess or that journey that you go through becomes the story and it makes you the person that you are. We all have our crosses to bear in life. And if we choose how we respond to those obstacles, then we come out the other side closer to our potential. And then, and as I dug a little deeper, blue was wisdom and transformation and my clients definitely come out the other side of their processes with me having had a complete and undeniable transformation. So very much the Blue Lotus fit. Uh, def definitely. That's, that's an awesome story. Um, mm. You know, when you were talking earlier, you were mentioning about the uh, self-sabotage. And I, I find that becoming more and more, um, you know, what people are experiencing. Um, what, what are you seeing with self-sabotage and, and why do you think, uh, if you think that it, it's becoming a bit more popular? I think, I think self-sabotage has probably always been there. I think it's becoming more and more evident as we become more aware of the fact that we've kind of we've been programmed almost by society that life has to look a certain way and a lot of those belief systems were created during the first world war or the cold war all the, you know kind of from the 40s 50s and 60s is where we are living with a lot of beliefs from except that they don't serve us now and so I think we're becoming more aware of the self-sabotage because there is this whole mindfulness, wellness, self-love movement that's happening right now where we're in, where people are more encouraged, I guess, to look at why they do the things that they do as opposed to just blindly sleepwalking through life and doing what they've always been told to. I was talking to a client last night, for example, who is at a point where he wants to take his business to the next level, but he's kind of stuck. He's mm -hmm. like, I just, I'm running out of time during the day. And I was saying, well, what can you delegate? What, what in your life can you delegate that it's not important for you to do? My boyfriend and I have hired a maid today or, or this year we've hired a maid to come in because for us, I mean, it's just, it's not worth my time to scrub toilets and, and bathtubs. It doesn't mean I can't do it. I, can I you know that was my chores growing up but when it comes to building my business and changing people's lives in the time that it would take me to clean the house I could have worked with two or three clients so and he said he said to me you know I, I would just feel really guilty having somebody else come in and clean my house mm -hmm. and I said well rather than you look you know rather than going with the belief that society has kind of programmed you with that if you have a maid that 
you know, you're a bad person or you're greedy or you're lazy. Why don't you look at it as you're creating employment for somebody else to feed their family? Like, <laughs> so I think there's a lot of belief systems that we're starting that have been perpetuated through the generations that we're starting to look at and say, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't right. And I think it's coming from the, the mindfulness movement that's happening right now. Yeah. And, and I really like how you put that because a lot of what I talk about is perspective shift and talking about the maid mm. that that's definitely a per, uh, perspective shift. Um, and, and I like how you say that, you know, it, we do need to look at that as it, it's not necessarily a, mm. a privilege thing. It, it's I'm offering, you know, opportunities for people all around, you know, so yeah. Um, no, and, and I think there's a lot to be said about us using time more wisely. And, you yeah. know, I, I think we're getting so busied in life that the whole thing of mindfulness just sounds foreign to people. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And I mean, the whole concept of self-love is foreign to people as well. Whenever I post on social media about putting yourself first or, you know, being self-loving, I invariably every time I do that I have someone reach out to me and tell me to stop promoting narcissism and I'm just like like are, are we so disconnected that we don't know the difference between a self-serving narcissist who wouldn't hesitate to harm someone else in order to get ahead versus putting your own mask on first like we tend to be okay with that concept when we're on an airplane yeah you have to put on your own mask first but that's like an everyday life concept that we need to apply if a mom isn't looking after herself, feeding herself, you know, doing the things that she needs to do to feel happy and full, she's not going to show up as the best mother for her kids. And then that's going to program with them, them with a whole bunch of beliefs that aren't going to serve them later in life. So if we would all just start doing what we needed to do to show up as our best selves, I think a lot of the problems that we see in society would naturally disappear. And I completely agree with you. And I've had audiences say similar things back to me when I talk about self-care. And what mm. worries me is a number of times I've brought up um, this topic at seminars to professionals, to clinicians, and they're also the ones talking about this is narcissistic, this is selfish, this is, um, you, you know, and I'm like, but you're, you're the ones who are supposed to know better, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it, it's also funny to me, just, just people's perceptions is that when I then start, um, I've got an ebook coming out about how to recognize people who are narcissists. And I, I had a, an article go viral on Elephant Journal early this year, earlier this year about how to heal yourself from the traumas that are caused by a narcissist. And so many people commented and reached out to me and they just said, you know, you need to stop judging people and stop care, like categorizing people and putting them in a box. And uh, I like, stop. <laughs> guys can't seem to win, but promote <laughs> self love and promoting our team. And I'm judging people. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting space. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I haven't had that other side. So <laughs> that, that is interesting though. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh yeah, no, it, it's, I, I agree with you. We don't want to label people, but we also need to identify people as to who they are, what they are, what they bring to the table. So, you know, <laughs> um, I, I would totally agree there. So if, if people, you know, were starting to do some of these shifts that you're talking about, um, what would be some of the first steps that they would want to take so that they could get rid of some of the self-sabotaging behaviors or, you know, being able to take care of themselves better without, um, you know, turning into selfishness? Hey, this is Chris, the host of On Finding Peace. And I'm proud to announce that Pocket Casts is a sponsor of this podcast. And did you know that you can have an even better listening experience with the new Pocket Casts app? Pocket Casts is a beautifully designed, easy to use, offering amazing features like play without subscribing and advanced episode search. Change can be hard, 
But we talk about change a lot on this podcast and the importance of change. So download Pocket Cast today from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store or on the web at pocketcasts.com. You'll be glad you did. People to start rewiring their own brains is first to be aware of the identities that they're holding on to. So oftentimes we have identities, whether we've taken them on ourselves or they've been given to us by society that can hold us back. So the identity of being a mother, for example, the connotations behind that typically mean that you have to put everyone else first. And I've seen a lot of mothers who get stressed out because they're working on building a business, but they have clutter. And so they feel like they've then failed as a mother. I've had male clients who, as a father, the connotation is being the provider, the breadwinner, the protector. And so they, sometimes men can have a, have problems stepping away from the corporate nine to five or the high paying job that's taking care of all the bills and the lifestyle that's been created to move into a, into something that they would prefer to do or that they would get more pleasure from doing because they'll have to take a temporary pay cut while they build that income back up. And so that means their family isn't cared for or their wife will have to step up and be the breadwinner in those cases. So the identities that we have can play a big role. When my partner and I first started dating, he's someone who's been diagnosed as having ADD, which a lot of people in today's society have diagnosed with. And something that he would get up in the morning and he would say his of, I focus, I pay attention to detail. And then as he was making sales calls for his business through the day, he would say things like, I have ADD, I tend to have blue squirrel moments. If I get distracted, just let me know. And after a couple months, he was like, you know, I think these positive affirmations that you talk about are nonsense, like they don't really work. And I said to him, well, one time a day, you're telling yourself that you focus and that you pay attention to detail and you have at least five sales calls a day. And you say that on every sales call that you have ADD and our brains are, are wired to win. Our every second, our unconscious mind stores two million pieces of information, and our un, and our conscious mind only gets 134 pieces of that two million. So there's a lot that's getting filtered out, and anything that's not in alignment with what we believe to be true about ourselves or the world around us gets filtered out. So if we're regularly telling ourselves that we are something, and this is the second part to your question, is the language that we use is really powerful. Because if I'm telling myself that I am something, if I'm telling myself, for example, that I'm a failure or that I'm not good enough, which a lot of people who come to work with me, they have those beliefs, then they're going to, they're not going to see anything that happens or that they do in their day-to-day life that proves that they're successful or that proves that they are good enough or they're worthy. Um, it's important to know as well that we don't communicate in words, we communicate in pictures. So everything that I'm saying to you, Chris, you'll get a picture in your head. Everything you've said to me, I'll get a picture in my head. Your listeners will get a picture in their head of everything that we talk about. And the pictures that go into our brain become like the address that we're putting into our GPS Mm -hmm. in our brain. And once our, once our GPS and our brain has that address, it works to get us to where we want to go as quickly and as easily as possible. So if we tell ourselves on a regular basis that we're in debt or that we're overweight or that we couldn't possibly be, you know, we would fail at starting our own business, well, then the picture that we're putting into our brain is failure, debt, and being overweight. So our brain is going to create more of that. So what we want to do is to start focusing on what we do want. We want to be careful the words that we use to identify and describe ourselves, because our brain is going to believe whatever we tell it. Our brain doesn't know the difference between fiction and reality and truth and lies. So we can reprogram our brain through the things that we tell ourselves. I can tell myself that I made a mistake yesterday and today I'm going to be successful. One of my affirmations that I say every day is, I'm a millionaire. The money just hasn't been deposited in my bank account yet. 
And I tell myself every day that I have million dollar ideas. And that every time I tell myself that, I have a brilliant, you know, that's where the idea for my book came from. I, a lot of the programs that I put together come from, come after I tell myself that I had million dollar ideas. So it's all in the language that we use to program ourselves with. Right. And, and that makes a lot of sense because, you know, what we do take in all of this information and it's kind of the same thing, you know, you are what you eat type deal, you know, and I think if mm -hmm. we change what we're, telling ourselves i agree with you then we're going to respond different um yeah and it, it's the words that we use and the things that we kind of allow into our environment become the nourishment for our food it's always interesting this time of year on social media there will be these self-deprecating memes that people put up um there's one in particular of this kid sliding down a slide looking scared to death and it's like me sliding into 2019 and i'm like oh like it's <laughs> funny yes but stop telling yourself that that's you because your brain's gonna go okay i'm a train wreck so that's how i'm right. going to respond we'll give you more of being a train wreck right and then when 2019 is a train wreck then they're gonna say see <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> you know so, yeah Right. I told you I was a screw up. <laughs> yeah, because you keep telling yourself that. Exactly. And, you know, now is, is it as simple as just saying that mantra every day and throughout the day um, until it becomes believed? Or is there something else that people can do? It's important to also be aware of the energy that you have when you say it. When I a couple, I think it was like 10 years ago, I had my very first life coach. And she said to me, I want you to tell yourself that you love yourself every day. And I said, well, I don't really believe it. And she was like, just that's okay, just say it. It doesn't matter how you say it. And that's where um, that's where positive affirmations typically go wrong is that when people say them, they don't say it with conviction. So what I get my clients to do is I actually get them, I call it the Superman and Wonder Woman pose. And mm. studies have actually shown that when you stand there with your hip, your feet about hip width apart, your hands on your hips, your chest up, looking forward, if you hold that pose for two minutes, you actually produce both men and women most more testosterone in the body. Testosterone makes you more competitive and it, it gives you that edge. So I get people to hold that Wonder Woman pose and say, I am a millionaire or I have million dollar ideas or I will be successful today and then picture themselves having that success and their brain will work to get them there. So the, the energy, the physiology, the body stance that you have is, is more uh, that both, both parts of the equation are needed. And then obviously, uh, you can't just say, I'm going to win the lottery and never buy a ticket and expect a million dollars to show up. You, you also have to actually start doing the work. Right. Yeah. So taking action, not just talking about it, but actually doing things towards it becomes very yeah. important. And even, and even if it's just one small step a day, I, what I tell my clients is set a goal that's the size of Mount Everest. So set that huge goal and then create a plan that gives you little tiny steps all the way back to now. Because the other reason that people typically don't reach their goals is they're looking at the top of the mountain thinking, oh my, oh my goodness, I have so far to climb. Whereas if we break it down into little bite-sized chunks, all they have to do is look at the step in front of them. And every day the goal has to be just to take one step towards your goal, towards that end game. It doesn't have to be a big step. It just has to be forward progression. Right. Now, I, I think all this is great, especially when you're talking about how you say it makes a difference, even if you don't believe it. You know, because that's where I, a lot of people will get stuck with me and say, but, you know, if I don't believe this, I'm not going to say this over and over. But I, I like what mm -hmm. you're saying. All right, you don't believe it, but if you say it in a way that you believe it, you will eventually get mm -hmm. there. Yeah, 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 because we'll reprogram those belief systems and we'll actually start taking action. Our brain believes what we do and not just what we say. So if we just focus on taking that one little step, then it'll see that we're making the forward progression, that we are doing things. And then all of a sudden, 
the universe, the universe will just start to align. Things will happen that you never would have guessed. Like I started talking about my book in August and I was like, oh, it'd be really good for it to be out this year. And I had no idea where to even look for an editor. One found me on Facebook. Like I didn't even put out a post about writing a book. I just had somebody connect with me and was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a publisher and an editor and I help entrepreneurs get their book out. And I was like, oh my, like you're what I've been looking for. So exactly. the, the universe will help you. You just have to put yourself in the right mindset to see it. Right. So can you spend a moment and tell us about this book that seems to have gotten out rather quickly? <laughs> yeah, it, it has. I had all, the, I had all the ideas there. So My book is called Stop Being a Selfish Bitch, and it's a comprehensive guide to living your best life through radical self-love. So it's not about red wine and bubble baths. It's about actually taking action to living up to your potential. I, this was actually a personal project for me this year. So last uh, September, 2018, I was living in Australia. I was forced to resign from the business that I had there due to some lies and technicalities. And I spent three months soul searching before I moved back to Canada. So uh, losing, um, losing my business, I also lost the ability to work and live in Australia. So I had to move back to Canada. And I spent three months soul searching and I had been coaching a little bit in those businesses and then doing some coaching on the side. I just hadn't made it my main hustle, so to speak. Right. And I, I knew that I, I had a gift in that area. And I, I guess I had some of my own self-doubt about if I could actually fully support myself and do all the things that I want to do in life just off of coaching. And I was journaling and meditating one day and I wrote down, you know, I know that I change people's lives. Like I, I was, had one client in Australia who had a lifetime of domestic abuse and violence. And as we went through her coaching sessions, I looked down one day to take notes and I looked back up and she, she honestly looked 20 years younger. She'd lost Whoa. 20 years off her face. And I was so dumbfounded. I lost track of where I was in, in the <laughs> session. And So I said, like I said to myself, journaling, I know that I change people's lives. And so if I give in to my fear and my self-doubt, you know, people always tell me that if I'm being self-loving, that I'm being a selfish bitch. But if I, I think I'm actually being a selfish bitch if I give in to this fear and self-doubt, because then I'm not changing lives. I'm not changing the people's lives who I meant, who I came here to impact. So I kind of, I asked, I posed the question to myself, if I was to just believe in myself, for 365 days straight, how many lives would I change in a year? And so the book is very much based on my experiences. So it's broken into two parts. Um, one part around the, the obstacles you're going to face on the journey, right? So you, you make the decision to live a life that's in alignment with your highest purpose. There's going to be some obstacles that you have to face. And I lay out those obstacles, the most common obstacles that people face and how to overcome them. And then the second part of the book is actually a step-by-step guide. Here are the things that you need to do to start leaving the past behind and to move towards your highest potential. Awesome. So how was it that you were able to get it so quickly? (laughs) So I I started recording it. I didn't actually write it out. So what I did was um, I do, I have a lot of road trips and a lot of traveling that I do. So I actually voice recorded it. Walking my voice and between me and my editor, we went through all the transcriptions and created a book from it. So yeah, it's come together really quickly. That, that, that's awesome. And, you know, I, I think right there, even in, in the creation of the book itself, kind of shows what you're describing about the book itself. You know, you know, that it's what when mm-hmm. you set your mind to it and, and you give yourself all of that positiveness, look what can be mm-hmm. done in a short period of time. 
Yeah, exactly. I've, I've had a client say to me at the beginning of the year, I don't know how you get so much done. Like you work with clients all day, but you're still continually learning. And I was like, well, I don't like, I don't really watch TV. And if I do, it's a documentary. So that's going to teach me something. When I'm in the car, I'm listening to podcasts or audiobooks. If I'm getting ready in the morning, I've got a podcast or an audio book on. If I'm cooking dinner, I've got a podcast or an audio book on. The, you know, we have a maid now, as I was saying. Um, but the times when I am cleaning the house, I've got a dog, so I need to sweep every so often. Um, you know, I'm listening to podcasts or audio books. So a lot of people have time during the day that's kind of dead time. And I've found a way to use that dead time to my advantage so I can keep learning. Whereas a lot of people don't see that, that dead space, that dead time during their day as an opportunity to, to grow or to do what they need to do. Right. And I think that's really good practical advice. You know, how do we shift around our daily schedule to find the time for what's truly important and not just say we don't have the time because in actuality we do. Yeah, I think the stat is like the average household or the average person watches like five hours of TV a day. And I'm, I just I have no idea where that <laughs> five hours would come from. So. <laughs> that, that's great. So as we're coming to an, uh, the end of this episode, w what would you think um, you, you really want people to understand about either your message or what you've been talking about? I think the biggest thing for me that I want people to know is that there's a reason that we're here. We're all, we were all put here for a reason, whether you believe in God or the universe or some other creator, there's a reason that we're here. And it's to do more than to go to a nine to five that we don't enjoy, eat some crappy food and then sit on the couch next to somebody that we're not really sure if we let there's more to life than that. And we just have to make the decision to figure out what that gift is. I think that we all have a gift that, is, that we can use to change the world. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, inspiring people to change their mindset like you and I are doing. It can be, you can change somebody's world by making the best pie. You can change somebody's world by doing the best oil change your passions will lead you to your gift. You just have to be willing to put the noise and the programming behind you in order to find whatever your gift is. And then it's your job to share that gift with the world. Awesome. So if people want to learn more about what you do, um, purchase your mm -hmm. book, where is the best place for us to go? So my book will be available on Amazon from December 28th, 2018. Okay. And you can find me on my website is bluelotusmind.com. So blue like the color, lotus like the flower, mind like your brain.com. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash blue lotus mind, or on Instagram, Tiffany Tombs. Awesome. That's, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Great. And I will in the show notes have your uh, main website there. So. You know, if anybody, you know, wants to get in touch with you, find your social links, uh, we'll put it there. And I encourage people to check out your site. There's a lot of good information there. And it definitely does allow everybody to link over to all your social media, uh, which, you know, there does seem to be a lot of it. So that that's awesome stuff. <laughs> um, but again, thank you for your time. There's been a lot of wisdom shared and, you know, a lot of things that we can actually start doing right now that you know will make a difference in our lives awesome thank you so much for having me it's been great thank you for listening to this podcast episode and i hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life if you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening and have a very mindful day. listening to this episode with Chris Shea. 
Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.